Hey everyone, JC here with a special video for you guys. This video is going to be best Mandela effects of 2017. This video is also going to be in celebration of the one year anniversary for this channel, which was actually about one month ago, but I never made the video, so I will just do it now, which will make it easier to keep track of moving forward. Anyhow, I came up with this list based on thousands of comments I received from you guys, from hundreds of Mandela Effect examples I have showcased on this channel over the past year. I will also be sharing some of your comments on here, since I believe they are an important way to verify some of these Mandela Effects. If you have watched every single one of my videos, please be aware that this might be a little bit repetitive as it is a best of the best video. I also have some quick announcements. I'm excited to announce that for the upcoming year, I will be doing YouTube full time. So that means there will be a lot more videos. And as a result of this, I'm very interested in building a bigger, better community behind this channel. To help accomplish this, I have created my very own Patreon page with some pretty interesting perks like exclusive videos and other stuff. Please consider supporting the channel. Check it out. I linked it down below. Anyways, guys, let's get into this video. To kick off this countdown, we have a Mandela effect from the most famous TV judge, Judge Judy. Her show has ran for many years and there is over 5,900 episodes of this show. This Mandela is a pretty big one and it has to do with the fact that Judge Judy has allegedly never used the gavel in any of the 5,900 plus shows they have aired. If you type Judge Judy gavel on Google, there will be one single image of her holding one, but I am not sure if it's photoshopped or perhaps it was a promo for the show. But no video has ever been found of her using one in any of the episodes. And these are some of the things you guys had to say about this. Here we have a comment from Helen. Judge Judy used the gavel to punctuate the end of her verdict all the time and also to break up arguments between the parties. She loved her gavel. What will she do without it? Here we have another one from Bruce Seeley. Judge Judy always used the gavel. I remember vividly. This next one is a pretty interesting one and it's from another update I did a while back. In this update I asked the question, who fell down the well? Was it Timmy or Lassie? And many of you were surprised to hear that who actually fell down the well was Lassie and never Timmy. And of course many actually watched the show and they remember Timmy falling down the well, but that never happened. When I first posted this video, somebody made a very interesting point. So that episode in The Simpsons, where Bart pretends to be Timmy O'Toole, who fell down the well, makes no sense. I too remember this episode. If I remember correctly, it was the episode where Bart plays a prank on the town, making everybody believe that Timmy O'Toole had fallen down the well. I find it very interesting that many of these things can be found in The Simpsons. It is almost as if The Simpsons are living in an alternate reality that many of us used to be in. For our next one we have one from the Disney animated classic Alice in Wonderland, the 1951 version. And it has to do with Twiddle Dee and Twiddle Dum, two characters in the film. And the thing in question is the thing on top of their caps. I asked, was it a propeller or a flag? Well, it turned out to be flags all along. However, many people clearly remember propellers. And I had shown some images of other people that remember the same thing. And here's one interesting comment that I received when I posted this video. Seek the Truth 77 had this to say. I asked my daughter because she loves watching Disney movies and before you gave the answer and I asked her what it was, she said propellers. And when I showed her that they were flags, she said, hey, that's not what it is. I find this comment very interesting as it is from a child that's actually watching the films now and not somebody that's trying to jog their memory from their childhood. This next one was a huge hit with my viewers. However, many people were confused, so I will be very specific with this one. It only relates to the logo itself, which was shown on the product and the packaging, and also on all the advertising, 
posters and commercials and we're talking about Beats headphones and the fact that many people claim that the logo has always read simply Beats by Dre but it turns out that that's not the case the logo has always read Beats by Dr. Dre here are some of the comments you guys left on the matter Stephanie wrote this it was Beats by Dre I worked at Staples and saw the logo almost daily when it came out she had 987 likes on this one jay johnson commented this no 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 it was a beat by dre i'm a graphic designer and super particular about visuals it just looks ridiculous 385 likes on that comment this next one is from border of chaos i'm a dj and i bought four pairs when it first came out it was beat by dre 591 likes on that one as well Usually, I don't like to include uh, logos on these best of the best list, but I think this one was the best one of the whole year. Next, we have one from The Exorcist, and it has to do with the very infamous scene with the projectile vomit and people not remembering the presence of a feeding tube in the scene, which apparently has always been there, and the majority of people just missed it. To me personally, this looks very odd and out of place. Here are some things you guys had to say about it. The Tatuana had this to say. There was never, ever a feeding tube in the Exorcist movie. Never. You are right. 100%. Nodas asked her parents, and they had this to say. My parents don't remember a feeding tube. Spooky. That is half our list, and before I continue, I have a huge announcement to make. I have launched a merchandise store for this channel, which features shirts, sweaters, mugs, stickers, and a bunch of other stuff. Please be sure to check it out and please consider supporting the channel. I would really appreciate it. Now moving on with our list. This next one is a quote from the Matrix movie. This one blew me away personally. I clearly remember, as many others, Morpheus saying this quote, but apparently it was never said. The quote I remember is the what if I told you quote. I remember the quote as what if I told you everything you knew was a lie? But apparently, in our current version of this reality, it was never said. When I first heard about this, it rocked me. This is by far one of my favorite movies, and I have seen it at least 20 to 40 times. And here are some of the things you guys had to say about it. Steve said, I've seen The Matrix at least 1,000 times, and it's in it. 405 likes on this one. Matthew said, Matrix quote. I remember it. Number four has to do with the debate of who was the spokesperson for Publishers Clearinghouse. Many people remember Ed McMahon, and during the video I showed some of the checks that people use for their Halloween costumes throughout the years. And as you can see, they have it signed as Ed McMahon. They remember Ed McMahon showing up to their house with all the balloons and the big checks. However, it turns out that never happened. He never delivered those big checks with the balloons. People also pointed out many references on multiple shows that have been done throughout the years. But once you look into it, it turns out he was associated with American Family Publisher, a rival company. But as I already stated, he never showed up with the big checks like many people remember and he was never associated with Publishers Clearinghouse. Here are some of the things you guys had to say about this though. Connie had this to say, if this doesn't wake people up that he was a spokesperson, then they will never, ever wake up. This went on for years, so many people received the envelopes in the mail too. I have vivid memories of them. Bonnie Day had this to say, so who was a spokesperson for Publishers Clearinghouse if it wasn't Ed McMahon? I remember it being him because I watched my grandfather get the envelopes and enter all the time when I was little. Hello. This is Rose Nyland. What? I'm one of the winners of the Publishers Clearinghouse? <laughs> Ed McMahon wants to see me right away? Before Carson retired, McMahon had branched out with his own ventures, among them, hosting Star Search. He served as a pitchman for a Publishers Clearinghouse. For number three, we have this Mandela effect. It came out of nowhere and it was a huge hit when I featured it in one of my recent updates. And it has to do with an immensely popular TV show, Star Trek Next Generation. To be more specific, it has to do with the character Picard. 
and its constant use of a crystal. In fact, the crystal could be seen in his hand or in somebody else's hand near him in over 80 episodes. Many viewers of the show were shocked by this, and basically no one remembers this crystal being around at any point in time during the show. Star Trek is known for some of the most loyal hardcore fans and they take every single detail into consideration and analyze basically everything. So this Mandela effect is so much better because of this. Here's what some of you guys had to say about this one. This comment is from Sarah W. Fox. I'm also a huge Star Trek fan, especially the first one and Next Generation. I don't recall a crystal at all. I would think I would remember that. I love crystals. This one's from Jimmy. Big Trek fan. Don't remember any crystal. Next one from Luke. No crystal in Star Trek. This one's from Paul. Another big time watcher of Star Trek. The Next Generation. I have the whole series in my hard drive and I have seen it all at least 20 or more times. Haven't watched it in a few months. But no, there was never a crystal like you described. Guess I'll have to watch the whole series again, laughing out loud. And finally, this one from Meg. I think this one is especially interesting. My dad is a hardcore Star Trek fan. Saw every episode. He does not remember the crystal. He says it changes the whole character. That he was never one to fidget. He was a decisive man. And now, he's a nervous man. Number two had a great impact on me personally as well as many others, as it is one I discovered myself and reported on it here first. During the September 11 attacks, the Pentagon was struck by a plane with 64 passengers on board, which all perished on impact. However, I remember hearing that there was no casualties at the Pentagon itself, due to the fact that the area which the plane impacted was being remodeled at the time. However, it turns out that was not the case. There was actually 125 casualties inside of the Pentagon, not including any of the people from the plane. When I first posted this, the vast majority of people remember the co that remember the coverage remember it the same way. I would say about 90% that are familiar agree and remember it similar to what I just said. When I posted this, I got many comments like this one. This comment is from Jarvis. I don't recall anyone dying inside of the Pentagon. WTF, I remember they were quote unquote remodeling that side. So everyone was lucky that no one was in the area at the time. Whoa. And 113 agreed with that one. Scout Sniper 14 had this to say. No deaths at the Pentagon. The area was under construction. And there was just so many other comments similar to these. Before I give you number one, I have a little bonus one for you guys. This has to do with the message that is written on the side view mirrors of your car. For this one, I had given two options. Objects in the mirror are or may be closer than they appear and the correct answer surprising many in this current reality is are it has never been may be and i will just read one single comment from this one mama don had this to say one minute into the video i got out to look at my car mirror well it's been maybe for the last five years and now it's are and finally, we have number one. This is one of the biggest Mandela effects I have ever heard of. And on top of that, it is a two for one Mandela effect. And it has to do with the German attack of 1916, dubbed the first terrorist attack in US soil. The explosion of Black Tom Island, which was carried out by German spies in New York City Harbor, jolted millions of people from their beds. It broke windows all over the region. To give you an idea of the magnitude of the explosion, there was $1 million in damage in just shattered glass alone. The shock waves from the explosions were so powerful that it generated an earthquake of the magnitude 5.5. Many died and the damage was around $500 million when adjusted for inflation. It was just massive. And to top it off, it nearly destroyed the Statue of Liberty. And as I already had mentioned, it is a two for one Mandela effect, and here's why. First of all, this attack was very large and in New York City, nearly destroyed the Statue of Liberty, so this should be very historic and important. Yet, the vast majority of people have never heard of such an attack. Even many people who are very knowledgeable in history 
don't know about this attack. Here's what some of you had to say about it. Here's what one viewer had to say. I gotta agree with you there, man. I'm kind of a history buff, and I don't recall the Statue of Liberty attack. This is what Thomas had to say. I consider myself a moderate history buff. I have never heard of any attack on the Statue of Liberty. As much as I love the Statue of Liberty, this would have been something I shouldn't have known. This is Fred. My buddy is a history teacher. He has been studying history for about 20 years and has never heard of the Black Tom Island attack. The fact that he has never heard of it just freaks me out considering how much he knows about history. On a personal note, I also have a friend that loves history and in fact he was trying to become a history teacher but decided to change it at the last minute and he currently is teaching. Um, and I spoke to him regarding this as well and he had no idea about this attack. Now for the second part of this Mandela effect. As I already had mentioned earlier, the Statue of Liberty was heavily damaged. And because of this, the torch has been off limits for over a hundred years. No tourist has ever been allowed up to the torch since it isn't structurally sound enough to support the weight. However, many claim to have visited the torch or knew someone who did. Others gave various reasons as to why they couldn't go up to the torch that particular day. Some said that they had heard somebody fell from the top, others just said it was just too hot that day. Yet another person posted that it was under construction when he visited. There always seems to be a different reason as to why it was closed off that one particular day. Very odd and a bit creepy indeed. Anyways guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to subscribe and I would also appreciate if you guys checked out my new online store and I would just like to wish everyone a happy new year.